the difference between leasing and buying a car. What are, what are some key differences in leasing a car and buying a car? Well, on a lease, most people, you'll hear that a lot. People say, well, you don't own the car, right? But the truth is, do you want to own a vehicle that's going to lose value, right? Very rarely do cars go up in, in value. So that's why leasing is so prevalent. 70, 80%, like you said, of people lease the vehicles. When you're financing the vehicle, you, you do, you technically own it, but the bank owns it while you're financing. So until you pay it off, the vehicle still belongs to the bank. Title, the title's held by the bank. You're not the, the owner of that vehicle. That's something. That's, that's a common misconception. You don't own the car either way. Yeah. Yeah. Un until you finally pay it off and then when you do pay it off mm -hmm. more people want to trade it in they want to yeah. trade it in right away yeah. it's so, old. It's old by the time you own it now it's old <laughs> exactly <laughs> but another thing with the with the leasing that people don't fully understand so like for me personally right the reason why i lease is that um so i'm a business owner yep right so i get better tax treatment for leasing a car exactly yeah. whereas like with the lease i can write off the insurance the gas and the lease payment formula percentage we won't get too complicated in it but sure. i can write that off on yep. my taxes mm -hmm. if i owned the car then i could only i have to go by the depreciation correct because it's an own i get less of a tax benefit for owning a car so it's in my benefit to lease the car because it's pretty much a write-off yeah for me and i don't have to worry about maintenance right so i never i haven't gotten a, i haven't paid for oil change and i can't remember mm -hmm. when because or at least everything is paid for and warranties too Yes, and then I get a new car every three years. So now, I always sell. Like, if you want to, everybody's personal preference is different. You can't force your views on somebody, exactly. right? Like, if you want to keep a car for 10 years, that's your right. You, you can do that. I don't want to do that. I want to yeah, get yeah. a new car. Yeah. So I know it's going to cost me a lot more money to buy a car and then buy a new car every three years mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. opposed to leasing a car and then getting a new car every three years. And the upfront is less. Yep. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you, on a lease, you only pay, um, let's say, the taxes, right? When you're financing a vehicle, you pay tax on the whole price of the car. Or on a lease, you only pay tax on, let's say, the monthly payment. Depending on the state and where you're registering the car, let's say, like New York, you're only paying tax on the monthly payment. Right. So I think that that's something that people could, and as far as for me, I don't drive a lot. So mm -hmm. 12,000 miles, I never go over 12,000 miles. I usually hit like 11, 10, 5. So it's, it's perfect for me. Yeah, but yeah. you were saying even if you do go over 12,000... Well, that's a big right? misconception also. Is a lot of people think that if I drive a lot of mileage, I shouldn't be leasing. You know, you hear a lot of people come in and they say, you know, I do 15, 20,000 miles a year. I shouldn't... You know, leasing is not for me. I think the contrary. It's the way I look at it is when you're leasing a vehicle, even if it's a, a, a high mileage lease, you know your true cost of ownership. Like you said, with maintenance, right? You know that you're going to have this car three years. You're going to put 15,000 miles a year. You'll have 40, 45,000 miles. Most warranties are, let's say, four-year, 50,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. So you're still covered under your warranty. You see what I mean? So you'll be able to look at it and say, hey, you know what? I know exactly what I'm going to be paying every month for this car as long as I have my lease. Now, when you're financing a car and you're putting high mileage on the car, the two things that lower the value of the car quickest is the amount of mileage you put on it and, and the condition of the car. So let's say if the vehicle was in an accident. So if I'm leasing my car and, and, and someone in the, my next-door neighbor is buying their vehicle and they're financing their car mm -hmm. in three years i have a lot more flexibility of what i can do i don't have to worry about if my car was in an accident or you know did somebody key my car did a garbage truck come down the street and hit my car because their value has dropped now so now you're playing this guessing game of well wait a minute what is my car now worth and you run into a situation where you finally pay off your car you've put money into the vehicle trying to fix it yeah. and then you turn around and say hey your car's worth six thousand dollars now the other thing that we we talked about was that Technology is moving so fast. So things get antiquated quick. So that's why leasing is nice because in three years, you, you may not need a small sedan, right? Now in three years, your life changes. You have a family, you have kids. Now I want an SUV. My lease is up. I come out of the lease. I go, I go into a uh, brand new SUV if I want to. Can't fit in a Honda Accord yeah, anymore. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now it's true. Technology changes. Even like the vehicle I have now. Like I saw the 2000, 2020 model. I'm like, wait. Yeah, yeah. That is ridiculous. <laughs> like I need that technology now. Okay. So it's like you can just come in every three years, man. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a huge benefit in leasing. Um, one of the things that is important when you're leasing or financing is the credit. Yep. How does that work? Does, is there a, a specific bureau that car dealerships use or, or the bank? What, how's so, it go? So it varies between manufacturers. So different banks. So let's say if you're going to Honda, Honda Financial, or Toyota has Toyota Motor Credit, Mercedes-Benz has Mercedes-Benz Financial. They all have different criteria, right? So 
it, it's, it's not it's not a, a blanket as far as what they use. Some people use TransUnion, some people use Equifax. Other manufacturers use what's called the auto score. So an auto score means your automotive history. So even if you had some trouble on your credit, but they saw, let's say for whatever reason, you had some medical bills or something happened, but you always paid your car note on time, mm -hmm. the bank may look at that and say, hey, well, wait a minute. Yeah, they missed some payments over here, but they always paid their car on time. So that means that, hey, you know what? This person needs that car. They need to get to work. They need to provide for their family. So no matter what happens, they're going to take care of that monthly payment. And another thing I want people to think, too, a lot of times people look at it like, okay, well, I'm not a business owner. And we're talking about luxury cars just because mm -hmm. we have luxury mm -hmm. cars, but it's the conversation is for any type of Absolutely. car. It doesn't matter. Yeah, 100%. But also, people have to realize is that you don't have to be a full-time entrepreneur to be an entrepreneur because the tax system, I can't stress this enough, <laughs> the tax system is set up for entrepreneurs and investors. It's not set up for employees, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So as an entrepreneur, you get all kinds of benefits. You can write off meals. You can write off travel. Mm -hmm. You can write off almost anything, realistically, as long as it makes sense. Don't get audited. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> um, and cars is one of the things that you can write off, right? True, yeah. So if you work in a regular job, and you might have a side hustle, why not get that incorporated, get an LLC, yep. get a C-Corp, whatever you want to do, and get a tax ID, open up bank account. Now you have a business. Yep. So now you can lease that from your side hustle business and you can deduct the same deductions like if you worked a regular job, right? Like now that, that goes against the, any money that you make on that end. So I say that to say, we have to thank like business people mm -hmm. and you don't even have to actually be a full-time business owner salespeople as well yep right if you're a 1099 or if you are in some some form of sales where you can um take deductions like real estate stuff yep. like that insurance you sell insurance the same thing so a lot of times people you know they have negative views towards things because they don't they have a lack of understanding yep. but once you have a lack of understanding and like i said now if you still choose to do that then it's, a, it's your decision it's mm -hmm. a free country 100 but a lot of times we make decisions based out of ignorance, not yep. knowledge, yep. right? Misinformed, so, yeah. Exactly. So one of the things I want to ask you was, you said um, MSRP versus price, right? What's the, what's the difference? What's the that? selling price? All right, so yeah, so you have MSRP, right? Yeah. That's, that's what's on the window sticker, right? So the manufacturer suggests the retail price of the vehicle. That's MSRP. Manufacturer suggests the retail price. That's what they, they recommend you should be selling that car for. Okay. Now, the selling price is what you negotiate, right? Or whatever. However, you can reduce the, uh, the selling price of the vehicle. That's what that comes down to. And so is that the same thing as a cap cost? So, no. Cap cost, let's say you're leasing or you're financing the vehicle. The final cap cost is the selling price plus anything else. So whatever money the bank is lending you, okay. whether it's a lease or finance, they're still lending a certain amount of money. So let's say on a lease, if you rolled your taxes into your payment, that's going to add to your cap cost. If you negotiated a $50,000 selling price and then you rolled your taxes of $2,000 into the lease, that's $52,000 cap cost. Okay. And is that negotiable? The well, it's based on what you negotiate as far as, let's say, your selling price. Okay. So the, whatever fees you put into it, those aren't negotiable. Those, let's say, taxes and DMV fees, things like that. So, all right. We talked about, okay, talk about leasing a car, but mm -hmm. buying a car. Somebody wants to buy a car, right? Mm -hmm. And you were saying most of the time, if you do want to buy a car, it, may, it makes more sense to buy a used car. I, I always recommend people, if you are going to buy a car, buy a, a certified pre-owned. Now, listen, there's vehicles you can find at these lots that are not authorized let's say mercedes-benz dealerships or toyota dealership me personally i think you're better off going to you may pay a couple of dollars more but you're getting it from the manufacturer so you have the backing with manufacturers and so just give you an idea most companies when they certify a vehicle the vehicle goes through let's say you know 150 point 160 point inspection mm -hmm. so not only will they inspect the vehicle to make sure that it's in a certain condition, so they'll eliminate things like, let's say there's, a, there's frame damage to the car. If the car is frame damaged, it doesn't qualify for certification, so it's eliminated. Most dealerships won't even take that car. They'll send that car out, and that's where you'll see the, the vehicles on these other side lots, right? And they're selling those vehicles. So there's really no recourse when, they, when it comes to something happening to the car. Not to mention the fact that once that car goes through the certification, a lot of manufacturers will put new car interest rates on those cars so typically pre-owned cars or used cars will have a higher interest rate than a new car but if it's certified you get a better interest rate so like right now like let's say you have 1.99 percent you can't get 199 percent on a on a used car you know anywhere else you know what i mean if the vehicle's certified that's the way to do it me personally the vehicles as you guys have all heard this people say oh well the vehicle loses value as soon as you drive it off the lot now what happens is really it's once it's registered the vehicle loses value that's when it 
that's when the vehicle loses value. And that's normally when you're driving off the lot. That's when you got it brand new. So yeah, when you're buying the car brand new, it, it initially loses its, its value when you, when you drive it off a lot or the vehicle is titled. Okay. So now you're buying a vehicle who's gonna, that's going to depreciate in value. That's what a car does. It's going to go down in value. So you're financing a car that's losing value. It already took a big hit right? when you're buying it new, opposed to a certified pre-owned, that the initial depreciation has already happened. Mm. It's already taken place. But you knew that car was taken care of. The manufacturer, the dealership you know, is putting themselves behind that vehicle saying, hey, we know this vehicle. We've inspected this vehicle. We know this vehicle's in good shape. We're willing to even put a, a, a new car rate on it so you have some more confidence when they're buying that type of vehicle. Okay. All right.